I'd like to, I'd like to thank Professor uh, to, uh, to give me an um, opportunity for this presentation. So my my talk today is I'd like to talk about musculoskeletal humanoid. Uh, I have been using the term musculoskeletal humanoid since the development of Botaro in 2005. And uh, the major two major points of the musculoskeletal uh, system. Uh, I think uh, multiple deg degrees of freedom. Uh, that will be, will, uh, be utilized for, for various tasks. We, we human uh, utilize our, uh, we, we have more than 200 degrees of freedom in our body and uh, we can unconsciously use all of many degrees of freedom for various tasks and motions and uh, I think the one of the possibility of uh, uh, using this type of robot in very future is uh, a diversity of the task and the uh, next next uh, the, the other another uh, point is uh, natural elasticity and uh, I think the natural dynamics and elasticity is uh, very popular in robotics society now, but uh, I, I think uh, there is a lot of problems still uh, for the natural, uh, utilizing the natural elasticity. So, so and, uh, my system is, uh, uh, my system is uh, uh, a bit less systematic compared with the conventional humanoid robots and uh, some other uh, very sophisticated uh, elastic systems. But uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to introduce uh, kind of very, very, very human-like humanoid robots uh, based on the musculoskeletal system. And, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, two major issues on musculoskeletal humanoid. <coughs> Uh, one is how to design and implement the body. So it is very difficult for mimic the our, our uh, organism uh, because it is made by very different materials and uh, uh, driven by different uh, system. So we we have to we have to develop a, a kind of uh, master systems and. Uh, <coughs> skeletal structure by using the artificial materials and uh, the, the second uh, issue is how to manage, how to control the body. It is also difficult to control the, our, our body. So, so one of my interests is uh, uh, to establish a, a method to to learn how to manage our, our own body. Uh, I mean, we, I, I want to connect the, all the nervous system to artificial computer system and uh, how, how, how can we uh, write the software for the, the nervous systems? It is very difficult. So, so I'd like to include some of my our trials for controlling the, the very complex body. So, so yeah, this slide shows the, the characteristics of the, the human musculoskeletal system. The human musculoskeletal structure, structure has very many degrees of freedom and consists of passive joints and uh, they are all uh, driven by uh, muscles and uh, tendons. And tendon has muscles and tendons have, have uh, natural elasticity and we, we can use uh, the elasticity to uh, smooth motions and uh, explosive motions uh, such as uh, uh, kicking or throwing. So I, I want to talk about that. And the uh, physical flexibility of the human body is uh, by elastic and viscous element and muscles. And we can 
uh, realize live motions by using the physical flexibility, and the, the flexibility uh, contributes to absorbing shocks. And, uh, we, we can adjust uh, the stiffness according to the situations, and maybe, maybe changing the uh, elasticity and the viscosity during the motions. And uh, uh, yeah, we can we can utilize the elasticity for for, for motions in sports or uh, some other explosive tasks. Before talking about the uh, musculoskeletal humanoid, uh, I would like to mention uh, introduce some of uh, our my my very early prototypes of. Uh, uh, muscle-driven robots. So this is this is a, a spine robot driven by the 36 pneumatic actuators, and uh, the only air actuators are controlled by the binary valves. And uh, the, the robot is now uh, tracking the red ball based on the Camera information, and uh, it can it can mm, generate some kind of feedback control method by using the the artificial muscles. And this is the quadruped uh, type robot, and the, its spine is uh, uh, passive flexible spine. So the robot, when the robot uh, wants to raise its uh, leg, the robot, the, the spine will bend and the, the, it is difficult for the robot to, to walk. So we can generate the, the, the motions of this type of robot. And, uh, this is a, a variable stiffness, very simple uh, variable stiffness uh, spine. And, uh, the robot can only change the stiffness of the, the torso. And, uh, when, when, when it, it uh, does a brachiation, there is a, a, a plate spring and uh, there are rigid plates, uh, two rigid plates around the, the elastic <coughs> element. And then when, when preparing for the brachiation, uh, the most stiff, most stiff uh, state. And uh, when, when the uh, grasping the next bar, uh, the torso will be the most soft, softest state for absorbing the shocks. Okay. And uh, we can also, uh, we, we, all, we have also uh, develop uh, kind of uh, flexible spine uh, quadruped robot, and this spine is driven by six wires, and uh, we can change the uh, three degrees of freedom total. But there are four, uh, five joints, so uh, I will talk about the, the how how we can uh, calculate the, the length afterwards. So the, the, this robot is, uh, uh, has a, uh, also flexible spine and there are uh, tension sensors in all, all of the muscles. And so the robot can control the stiffness of the uh, torso uh, based on the tension sensor feedback. And, uh, by utilizing the spine motion, it can uh, turn over on the table. Or uh, this is th these are just um, just demonstrations, but uh, uh, demonstrations for uh, showing the, the effectiveness of on of the uh, flexible spine. And 
then I, uh, I and my group uh, continued to go, uh, go to the, the whole body mass movement type robot. This robot's name is Kenta, and uh, Ken, Ken means uh, tendon in Japanese, and Ta is a boy, so this is a tendon boy in English. And uh, there are, there are uh, 40 muscles and uh, 10 uh, spherical joints in its spine. We can, we can change the uh, state of the uh, spine by uh, putting all 40 wires. And uh, I, I, I'd like to uh, introduce how to generate these motions. This is a kind of direct teaching. And this, this slide shows uh, another topic of uh, my research. Uh, this is uh, uh, just a lower body of mass human 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 and uh, there are a lot of uh, motors for putting wires and uh, the, the motors, uh, uh, we, can, we can easily add motors, uh, wires, uh, after designing the robot so that the, it can increase the maximum force. Uh, so we call this uh, reinforceable muscles. And, uh, these demonstrations show the, uh, before adding uh, the muscles, uh, it can bend this uh, extent, but after adding two muscles for uh, uh, a leg, then it can bend deeper than the leg would be. And I think this, this movement is very, very uh, uh, biologically So there are a lot of topics for, for this type of robots. Very uh, any degrees of freedom uh, will be contribute to will contribute to the uh, diverse of tasks and diverse uh, it can adapt to diverse environment. And the human we use these very many degrees of freedom unconsciously. As I mentioned before, and the musculoskeletal structure has an advantage of the muscle view system for uh, severely jointed structure. I, I mean, uh, so, so for example, the spine has uh, 24 spherical joints, not, not spherical, but one, one joint of the spine has uh, five degrees of freedom, three rotations and uh, two kinds of shifting very little motion but it has five degrees of freedom on each joint. So we, we have uh, our spine has totally in uh, 120 degrees of freedom. And uh, yes uh, the robot is normally a serially uh, articulated robot uh, driven by uh, normal motors. Uh, needs the, each each motor needs very uh, many uh, torque, but uh, the serially jointed structure driven by uh, many uh, wires. Uh, each in, each each wire uh, do not does not need uh, very many uh, force because the the wires. Operate to move the whole structure. So, so more the more uh, degrees of freedom in a serial jointed structure, uh, the, the the musculoskeletal structure, uh, muscle driven structure uh, will have uh, advantages. And the multiple jointed spine 
the, is uh, the typical uh, structure in our uh, building use of freedom model. We can also use the, the natural system viscosity for various uh, purposes, for such as safety and uh, uh, restoring force of the uh, body against to the gravity force, and the uh, lightness of the motion and the postures and the explosive tasks, and the modification of softness is uh, also uh, good for for adapting to the environment and uh, also supporting you. For example, heavy object. And uh, we are uh, reinforceable masses are uh, uh, also uh, you, uh, useful for. Uh, it is very uh, a unique concept in robot, I think. And, uh, and uh, actually, uh, the very human life uh, robots uh, has a, has a a possibility of uh, realizing human life natural motions. So, a kind of impression. And the, the problems are how to manage such a flex body. And, uh, but we can, we can uh, learn how to manage our body uh, in uh, growing. So, I think the, the human, I, I am interested in the the human's growing mechanism. Uh, and uh, I want to use the, the human's mechanism for this kind of role. Okay. So I, I have, I, I developed, uh, we developed uh, the first musculoskeletal human at Totaro in 2005. And uh, it has 91 degrees of freedom in joints. And number of motors, and number of muscles, uh, 19 to 120. Uh, this number, uh, because uh, this number is changed, because there are like, reinforceable muscles. So we can add, add any uh, extra muscles afterward. And there are uh, elastic and viscose elements, uh, for example, between the, the all joints uh, of the uh, spine. And there are tension sensors for, for changing the stiffness. Of course, feedback control stiffness, but uh, we can change the stiffness of the uh, body. And uh, there are a lot of tactile sensors, and uh, ears, and the eyes, and gyros, and 3D accelerometers for Detecting the posture. And the, all the all the uh, bones are designed by using the 3D CAD system and uh, rapid prototyping. And uh, uh, for example, this is a, a side bone of, of this robot, and there are a lot of uh, electrical parts and. Uh, DC motors, opening wires, and this is a, a muscle unit for, for adding afterwards for this robot. And there are, the, there are two types of muscles. Uh, one type is uh, inside of the bones, and the, the other side type is uh, uh, based on the uh, muscle unit. These are the movies of the total motion. And there is a, a tactile, tactile sensors on palm and arms. So it can react to the human touch. And this, this is the uh, second musculoskeletal human of ours. Uh, the name of the robot is Kojiro. And Kojiro has 
uh, also uh, the same structure and uh, redesigned by Kotaro's uh, experience. And there are a lot of uh, elastic elements and uh, it can uh, absorb the shock on when beating uh, the drums. And uh, utilizing the, the spine, you can push up, push up down. Do this motion. And actually, we, we have, we have uh, developed a kind of wearable operation device using the, the muscle unit. And uh, we, can, we can teach motions uh, is robot. And uh, after, after I have moved to the, the Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, uh, the JSC members are continuing <coughs> to develop the musculoskeletal robots. And this is the, the, the latest uh, humanoid uh, Kenshiro. And today I want to talk about the, the also how to how to generate the motions of this type of robot as well. So how to perform motions uh, uh, can be can be considered as uh, uh, several types, several uh, based on several uh, viewpoints. Um, so one is uh, first is uh, based on joint angles. And uh, this is very a, a normal method to, to represent the robot posture and the motions by using the, the joint angles. But it is uh, somewhat difficult in musculoskeletal humanoids because there are uh, muscles and uh, not motors for driving joints. So we, we, we have to know the relationship between joint angles and muscle length. And uh, when, when we use the pulleys for the muscles and joints, then it, uh, we, can, we can easily calculate the uh, relationship between muscle length and joint angles. But uh, our body is uh, different from such system. And uh, so we, we now uh, calculate the, the relationship based on the straight length, straight line density, but it is uh, it has some kind of uh, errors, so uh, it is not so good to uh, control based on the joint angle. And uh, another type of perform uh, motions is direct teaching. So all the all the muscles have uh, tension sensors, so we can. Uh, we can let the all the muscles in tension control mode, and then if if I uh, if, if we we move the the robot directly, the muscles uh, length of muscles are automatically changed based on the human's uh, teeth, and we can record the length of the muscles and then repeat the the, the recorded mode muscle length, then uh, the robot can regenerate the, the same motion as they, they are taught. So another type of uh, performing motions uh, using utilizing learning method. So learning, what, uh, what should the robot learn? Uh, one possibility is a sequence of motor commands such as joint angles or muscle links. And another uh, type of uh, targets of learning is uh, sensor motor mapping. So I'd like to uh, explain these methods. So this uh, figure shows the, the, the relationship between joint angles and muscle links. So for example, this, this robot has four, 40 muscles and uh, uh, 
10 joints, so each joint has 3 degrees of freedom, so this, this spine has 30 degrees of freedom and driven by 40 muscles. And we can, we can calculate the, the yellow lines are muscles, so we can calculate the length of muscles when the uh, joint angle changes. So, so, and uh, then we can, we can order, we can control, we can send the reference length of the, uh, the, the muscles. Then the robot can uh, reproduce uh, this uh, posture. So this is uh, the method of uh, performing motions based on joint angles. These motions are uh, uh, made based on the joint angles, and uh, it, can, it can bend the spine and uh, move the spine uh, as they want. And uh, this, this movie shows the, the visual feedback, uh, spine motion. The spine and the neck and the eyeballs are uh, uh, separately tracking the object. Based on this, these are based on the joint angles and the calculation of the relationship between these the joint angles and the muscle members. Another uh, type of uh, performing tasks is uh, no, uh, generating motions uh, using direct teaching. So this this is the two these uh, the two leads for being the Masters of this type of robot. And uh, you can see the, 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 the tools are moving according to the uh, teaching by human. And uh, the system will remember uh, the motor angle, so, combination of motor angle. That, is, uh, uh, that means the, the posture of the so we can we can directly teach the motion of the spine like this, and then the system can reproduce the, this motion. And this this method is very used for for, uh, for realizing some kind of demonstration motion. Uh, so this this method is uh, used for Kotaro and Kojiro. And, uh, so there are a lot of uh, not straight cuts in the spine. So that type of teaching is uh, uh, useful for this type of very complex relationship. So another type of uh, generating motion is uh, uh, learning, using a learning. Learning a sequence of motor commands such as joint angles or muscle lengths, and uh, uh, this, this, these motions will be shows uh, 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 so the the robot uh, learn the. Optimize the motion in, in the simulation and using the identical bodies. And uh, after running, the, the, robot, uh, the system will send the robot, real robot, the uh, optimized motion. And then generate walking or uh, crawling are uh, uh, realized. And this, is, this slide shows also uh, uh, using the, the uh, learning, but learning uh, sensor motor mappings. So the input is uh, sensor information, and output is uh, actual mm -hmm. command. And uh, the, ro the robot uh, inputs the, the sensory information. For example, uh, 
inertial sensors and gyro sensors and visual sensors. So by when learning the swinging motion by using the visual information and the uh, movements of spine and the legs, there is a, a, a kind of object uh, in front of the robot and uh, uh, we can detect the optical flow. Uh, that means the, the motion of the robot in the screen. So the, the robot lands to uh, uh, lands the, uh, uh, the robot runs sensor motor mapping uh, by uh, in the simulation and the, the uh, acquired uh, sensor motor mapping in the neural network. Uh, the robot, the real robot can uh, excite the swing motion based on the visual. <coughs> and uh, other kind of IMU sensors. So these are the, the method to control the, the, the musculoskeletal body. So, so my, my, my talk on musculoskeletal robots uh, uh, finish. So now, now I'd like to uh, briefly talk about the recent uh, research activities on in, in my new laboratory at the uh, uh, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. Uh, so I am I am doing uh, continuing uh, musculoskeletal humanoids for learning for uh, learning motions uh, and uh, utilizing elasticity and uh, uh, we are now developing a new pneumatic driven musculoskeletal humanoid robot. And we also did research on uh, domestic tasks, and we also uh, doing research on agriculture uh, aspects. This is a movement of the uh, uh, plant pot robot. They are seeking for the sunny area. I would like to uh, introduce two topics of uh, my current laboratory. So first is utilizing the assistive, uh, especially for explosive motion we are interested in, uh, throwing or servicing, kicking, and the instantaneous large speed or force uh, is generated by utilizing the elasticity and the, uh, the inertial energy. So, so this is uh, the, the, the series elastic uh, one EOF uh, model and uh, we uh, use the motors uh, characteristics for generating uh, optimal input for the maximize, for maximizing the velocity and uh, it is difficult for more than two degrees of freedom system because the uh, uh, inertial parameters are changing uh, according to the postures and uh, also I, uh, we want to utilize the, the gravity energy for, for maximizing the velocity. This will be short like this. How to, utilize, how, how to maximize the, the, the velocity of the, the end effector is a uh, current topic. And another topic is uh, uh, pneumatic driven robots. Uh, the, the advantages of the uh, pneumatic driven robots are, uh, I think, the softness and low power consumption uh, because the hard sitting doesn't need, need energy for uh, air driven robots because they only have to uh, close the valves for keeping posture. So, and uh, as I told before, uh, the multiple degrees of freedom uh, is. Uh, 
easy to realize by using the, the mass multiple system because of couple to life, couple to life. So, but the, we are focusing on the uh, embedding the compressors for uh, on the human adult body. So we are designing a new type of uh, human form robot driven by the mass pen type air muscles. And there are uh, several uh, very small uh, compressors for uh, in, in, in body, embedded compressors. And this compressor is uh, uh, very uh, low power, but the, the pressure uh, power is uh, multiplication of the pressure and flow. And uh, the, the compressor is very high pressure and very low flow compressor. So we can, we can um, store the high pressure air in the, in the tank. Tank is a, a hollow bone in the legs and arms. So it can generate uh, instantaneous higher uh, force, but not continuous. But so so we, we want to utilize the, the mass elasticity and the uh, high pressure area for, for doing some explosive tasks. Okay, so this is the summary of my talk. So I, I talk on the mass scale humanoid points, uh, degrees of freedom, and we contribute to the diverse tasks. And uh, we can use the natural speed. And uh, the, the difficult point uh, how to design uh, the body and how to, how to control the body. The, I, I briefly introduced my uh, recent activities. Uh, for example, utilizing natural SST for explosive tasks and compressing in the pneumatic vehicle, uh, muscle skater, human. Okay, so, Thank you for your attention. We have time for a few questions. Has 
30 degrees of freedom in the spine and 40 muscles for gliding. So if the one or two muscles are broken, uh, then the robot can move using another uh, using the other uh, muscles. So uh, I understood the uh, this uh, teaching the uh, the trajectories. Uh, you are teaching or you are moving the body, and we are taking the angles and the speed or the length. Actually, actually, uh, the robot does not have uh, uh, any uh, un joint angle sensors uh, because uh, one, one one is because the, uh, we don't have uh, joint angle sensors. But but another reason is uh, it is uh, <coughs> difficult for uh, measuring the precise joint angle of spherical joints. So we 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 are trying to. to develop some kind of uh, uh, joint angle sensor for spherical joints by using the uh, cell phone camera or uh, optical mouse but it is difficult for, for us to measure the, the precise joint angle so, so the, when, when teaching uh, the robot does not record the, the joint angles but uh, it records the, the muscle length so the, the combination of mm -hmm. the mass length is uh, uh, the key to the reproducing the posture. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, but you have more degrees of freedom understood, mass length and the, what you are moving. So uh, how is this handled? So it's just uh, according to the strength of the muscles or according to which muscle is moving? Because you have more muscles and degrees of freedom for your, for your body? Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I, I have introduced a kind of learning method and uh, we, we can use the learning method to also to uh, remember the relationship between the, the teaching uh, taught uh, muscle length and the taught posture. Of course, it, it needs the measuring the uh, joint angles. But uh, uh, we can we can teach directly teach and move move the robot and the robot uh, rem remembers the muscle length and the joint angles uh, combination of the muscle length and joint angles and the neural net neural network can learn the relationship between the joint angles and muscle lengths then the the neural net will be used for, for generating appropriate muscle lengths uh, when, in, when, when a certain joint angle combination is involved. So, so that's the possibility of uh, uh, extending the entire teaching method. But still you have more muscles than, decrease, than uh, you have decrease of freedom. Ah, okay, okay. When, when we add uh, extra muscles. Then, um, yeah, the, the, we, we have to we have to reteach the motions, and the mass, number of muscles are changed. Do you think it's also possible to do this kind of teaching for for walking? Okay. Yeah. Actually, there is a difficulty, difficulty of the, the direct teaching. Uh, that is, uh, uh, when, when, when teaching, uh, there is a, a human force to move the robot, and the, the muscles are uh, helped by human's force. But uh, when the robot uh, moves itself, the, the robot should, the muscles should uh, generate the necessary forces, including the human force, to reproduce the posture. So, so there is always the errors uh, between the teaching phase and the uh, reproducing phase. So, I think the walking is the, uh, walking needs the a very precise joint angle, uh, precise reproduction of the motion. So, I think it is difficult by direct teaching for working. Thank you. Okay. Um,
it's actually about the, um, the material you're using for the muscles. So I understand uh, if you're doing a motion like this, or you're pulling your arm in, that it's uh, that it's elastic and it's able to, like, to pull that arm in. But what about when it's extending back out? Like, does it remain stiff enough that it can help push it back out? Or does it completely rely on the other set of muscles here that pull it back out like that? So, so do you mean the muscle has elasticity? Right, it's like, it's, you can pull it, but it's like if you're like if you're extending it back out, is it able to apply any force at all, or is it just kind of holding? Mm, there are several types of uh, muscles we are using. So one is uh, based on the uh, wires are based on the uh, chemical material. For example, vectron or xylon or dynema. When, when the elasticity is needed, uh, we can add the, the extra elastic elements in series to the, the muscle. So uh, when, when the, the muscle has elasticity, then the, the, maybe I, I, we, we, have to, we have to measure the elasticity and uh, uh, utilize the elasticity for some kinds of tasks. And I think so that is much your question. <laughs> Just a Can you tell us a little bit more about your embedded compressor? Embedded compressor. Oh. Actually, this is a, a commercial product of the Japanese company. And, uh, uh, the weight of the compressor is uh, about 200 grams, and uh, uh, the power consumption is about uh, 6 watts. And uh, the maximum pressure uh, of this is uh, about uh, 0.4 megapascals. And the uh, airflow is very light, as I said. And, uh, for 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 storing the 0.4 megapascal air in 0.5 liter uh, bottle, uh, it it needs about uh, five minutes. So the flow rate is very low. But I think the after 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 storing the high pressure air, then the robot can use the high pressure air. Yeah, I think it's time for lunch, and we can uh, continue the discussion there. Uh, thank you again.